Okay, back again. So, what I thought we'd do this time is now I'm gonna sharpen this knife. If you watch my other video, this has got a, um, well, a very quick micro-convex that I put on it. But now I'm gonna sharpen it Scandi. So I'm just gonna rest it flat on the bevel and sharpen it like I'm doing now. Just flat on the bevel, proper out Scandi. So I'm gonna come up with a Scandi finished result and then we're gonna test it. So it's a lovely flat stone, so we should get our result. What I like to do is I like to go into all the marks right from the bevel. There's a lot of um, machine marks on the bevels. Um, it's nice if you get rid of all of them. Usually they're a bit of a quite persistent around oop, the tip area, up around here, or in the belly, sometimes the tip. Um, but it looks a lot better and um, it's better to stroke, you don't get any of the paste caught on any of the marks. It's just it's just like doing the job properly really. And you can do it in several sharpens. So you can see that's how I'm gonna sharpen it. So I'm, this is a best of two thousand stone. Um, the reason I'm using this rod, the thousands, is um, this is dead flat. It's been uh, it was flattened some time ago, and I haven't used it since, as you can see by the uh, fung algae that's built up on this stone. So that so you can see, I'm just going to sharpen it, Scandi. So when I've finished, when I'm on the strope stage, I'll come back. Okay. So I've sharpened this Scandi. Everything I've done so far has been flat on the bevel. So I've done a 2000 best of stone. I did a 6000 best of polishing stone. And then I did a bit on the 8000 and I've stroked this flat. So I haven't actually gone off the bevel yet. I've just done everything Scandi, i.e. flat on the bevel. But now I'm just gonna do what I normally do is because just to make sure that the edge is right. So I'm going to lift off the bevel so that you see exactly what I've done here. Yeah, there's no marks there. The thing is, I don't use a soft stroke, so really you have to do this just to be sure that you've definitely taken out all the serrations. Yeah, see, I've got some marks. Yeah, serrations there. I don't know if you can see them. See, that. That there, loads of little serrated marks. If I was using a soft bevel, as I was doing the strokes, <clears throat> the stroke would spring up around the edge, and I would have, I wouldn't have these serrations. But the trouble is, you can wear your edge back very quickly that way that's why I prefer to take control of everything and have a hard stroke and do it do that process myself because sometimes I really like to polish the bevel well if you if you want to polish the bevel you do 20 strokes like that hard to polish the bevel but then the strokes springing up it's taking your edge back and then um, you're trying to extend your edge out, not well, basically you're creating something akin to a, a micro convex and it's very easy to get too convex near the edge and then you really you've got a knife that's not very sharp yeah more marks coming out so Basically, you gently keep going at that angle until you see the marks go, and then you know your edge is smooth. It might seem that you you have to. The only way to take out serrations is to gently polish the edge, so you are rounding off the edge very slightly, very precisely. If you don't do this, then you'll have a toughy edge, and when you start to carve wood, that edge will break down very quickly and before long you'll have 
quite large serrations and they will show up on your work. Yeah, see that's I've got to flatten the bevel, get the stroke nice again, so I can think about this. This is the side that's got the problem. It's not a problem, it's yeah, see that's okay now. I think we're there. Right, just seeing what I've done. So that's sort of, um, you can see it's in a nice state of polish. Not perfect. Hang on, let me smooth. Take the paste off. This leaves a bit of a film, this paste, which is anti rust corrosion, so it's, it's good stuff. So, see, so you can see the bevel, it's, it's flat, it's scandy. Everything's been done scandy apart from what you just saw there on the stroke. So let's have a look at the sharpness in paper. And then we do our tests in some uh, wood. So that's superb. I think it needs a bit more stroking. See, it will push cap, no problem at all. Better than our micro convex that we did. But I did detect something that the tip might not be perfect. More than now. <laughs> Seems pretty right to me. I'll just do a little bit more. Oh yeah, maybe there is a little mark there. No, it might have been a bit of the paper. So you can see that. I'll just pull the paper, pull the paper there. That might be the angle, probably is the angle. Try that again. It's not quite as sharp there. Try again. It's just trying to push it on the belly. There's nothing wrong with that belly at all. There, so you can see what it's like. So now, we have a lovely sharp knife, but is that edge supported? That's the thing. So I'm just going to reposition the camera so that I can do some wood carving. Okay, so here we are. Bachelor blank, a piece of you. It's not spotted actually, it's just season you this is. Right, let's see let's see how we go. You is a hard soft wood. me it, the edge looks okay. I would say it's a supported edge but the proof is in the pudding. This is what usually tells a knife. We're going to go cross grain. If there's any weakness in the edge 
this will expose it. Pinching zone. Same here, let's shape these blades a bit. And handles a bit small. That's a nice bit of twist in action there. Nice little knot. Well, see, that goes to show that that bevel is at the right angle. Because I've sharpened it scandy. Let's have a look. I'll do a little bit more and then we'll have a look at it, but it looks fine to me. I can't see any visible signs. We'll soon see. Do a few more knots to be sure. This is a knotty wood. Right, so you've seen it do some work. There's no, there's no cuts in that, no edit. You've seen in real time what it's done. I'm not gonna slap it coffee a minute. Ooh. Let's test again. No damage there. That's, there's any place that is a little bit 
stand in sharpness, it's the belly. Oh, all right. Well, I haven't touched that bit down there, that's worth razor. But, um, that's less. So, test again. So that's beautiful, I can push cut there. Push cut there. Push cut there, a bit more resistance there. Now on the belly. No damage. Just not quite right there. Not quite under percent. Right, let's stroke it back up again and see what see if it all comes back. You can see that it's gone through some knots, gone cross grain on a piece of U, and it's perfect. And we'll stroke it back up. See that the prop that bevel is at a proper angle, isn't it? You would expect not more to know what it to know what it's doing, and definitely I've sharpened that bevel. Everything that was done on the bevel flat, apart from what I showed you on the stroke. So, which is best? Scandi or Scandi convex well actually when it comes to um, more knives I can say at least more a companion the Scandi there's no point in <laughs> doing Scandi convex because you lower the sharpness a little bit with the Scandi convex um, and if I go cross grain it's still going to batten wood and stuff so but like I showed you before if you want to do a quick repair then put a little convex on this like I did now it's not quite as sharp, but it is resilient and it is quick. Right, so just got our bevel and now we do our edge again. Go up sleeper, steeper. Just basically polish our edge off very gently. Because it's the apex that wears, it's the apex that gets the scratch pattern in it. That's the thinnest part of steel. That's the part of the steel that's going to wear. And it's going to first, it's going to lose its polish. And then the scratch pattern's going to get deeper and deeper until it, at some point you would say it was a micro serration. If you go past that, then it will become, you know, a mid sized serration, then a large serration, blah, blah, blah. So that's why you have to maintain the edge like I'm doing there steeply you have to polish the apex and the only way you can do that is by doing what I'm doing right going steep at it sort of dragging it across but very gently because you're you basically you're trying to polish the edge over time to take out restore the polish on the edge without making it rounding it off too much <laughs> right so We should be right back where we were before. And that's beautiful that way. You can go through slowly like that. Yeah, see, there doesn't seem to be any problem there at all now. There we go. Without having to sharpen the other knife, I can tell you now. The best option for a more companion is to sharpen it like it scanned it because that is fine and if you can go cross grain on a piece of U, go through some knots then it's obviously going to be fine for battening because that's wood as well isn't it unless you hit something hard so yeah that's a properly angled bevel and a lovely piece of kit really for the price I think it's like 13 pound you just can't go wrong and it's a nice wood carver I could quite you know my only gripe would be that the handle could do with being a bit bigger but that's the case with most knives to be honest with you yeah and I mean that's the way I would 
to maintain this knife. Just keep doing that as soon as you feel any sort of um, the edge slightly losing its bite, then keep it topped up with polish, just like I showed you there. Do a bit on the sides, sort of brush past the edge, and then go steep, very gentle, polish off the edge, and this will get, go for flipping. This will do a lot of carving before it needs to go back to a stone like that. And I mean, that's the art of stroping, is to be able to maintain the edge to a high level with the strope and not go back to the to the stone. You know, to to, to get as long in as much wood carving in between strokes as you can get. That's my aim anyway. So anyway, hope you found that useful and interesting and um, I'll be back with another video soon.